Genetics Day once again with part four of Protein Imaging uh, series. So today we're going to keep on going with these uh, UCSF cameras tools to basically continue analyzing a little insulin right here. So last time we went over the nice tools that allow you to change the, the visuals, the way your protein look, but didn't give you any information regarding the protein itself. So today we're going to try to draw more information. The first step, of course, is looking at the H-bonds. It's not the first step necessarily, but it's a good way to start. As you know, H-bonds are very, very important for both uh, ligand binding, creating that nice secondary structure. And actually, we can see that it's important right now by just pressing apply without changing any of the parameters. And we can see that it's actually very involved in maintaining that alpha helix or these better sheets right here. As we know, these better sheets are actually not being uh, naturally made. But this is when it's actually crystallized, these bonds can actually create. But you see for the alpha helix, which are actually endogenous, that are actually very, very, very linked with uh, making uh, these H bond. You can change the selection between making them intra or intermodal. Here it's being selected as one single model. So of course, you can only see them if you go intra model. You can add the distance. So now we're selecting everything. So of course, we can see there's a slight variation, but it's all around three angstroms. To remove it, just rerun the, 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 the script once again. Only find H bonds. Now you can have a little bit more selection. Let's say you select Let's say this position right here, okay? And I'm interested in, wait, let's recenter this, select this again. Let's say in all H bonds with the end selected, I can apply. Let's see that there's actually one H bond that's being selected right here. Instead of maybe if I do this and I apply, I can find everything, everything over here, okay? So now we change the criteria. So now it's red. We usually, of course, we can set this to blue. Let's make it a little bit nicer. Okay. Perfect, and apply. Perfect, for now, this should do the job. So this is uh, actually the analysis of H-bonds. Quite easy. Your SF camera makes it very, very, very quick. Okay. Now, let's go over the next tool. Next tool regards what it's called clashes and contacts. Clashes and contacts is basically when you have atoms, they're sharing a common space and probably are interacting in a detrimental way. So they're probably having their electrons clashing each other and actually pushing them away, actually rendering in real life a structure that would be different than the one you're seeing because they're simply too close in that structure. So we can analyze basically by selecting the whole structure. Let's do that now. And check if there's actually anything going wrong with this one. Who knows, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Sometimes there is, so we'll get to check that right now. So designate, we're gonna check all 127 atoms. We're gonna see if there's any clash between themselves. Keep the settings the same and look for a pseudobond of the yellow color. Is there anything? Well, yes, there is. Actually, at position here, at veiling three of chain C. There's actually a problem here. As you can see, there's a carbon binding actually four different atoms, all carbons in this case, of course. This is not supposed to be the case. So we can just remove these atoms as if they were never there. So we can just hide them. Perfect. At the same time, I sadly remove them. So let's just select these. And once again, all of them and just add them and show. Perfect, okay. Now, let's say we're, you're in the lab and you're very interested in a mutation. So let's say you're looking insulin and maybe position alanine 14, alanine 14 is transformed into a tryptophan, so a really big bulky element. How would you check that? Well, you could check for clash and contacts, but first you need to mutate it. So there's no tool in UCF Chimera that's called mutagenesis or mutation. It's actually called Rotomer. Rotomer does the exact same thing, it's just named differently. So Rotomer type gives you the option of selecting all the amino acids. So you can go here in tryptophan, and there's different Rotomer libraries, so different possibility of calculation or actually of databases containing different orientation for these amino acids. I usually stay with Dunbrack as it is the stock one, but there's different option with dy dynamic mix. 
Richardson and Richardson mode. Okay, so Dunbrack, just apply. And what you obtain here is actually a set of all the possibilities. So if you go around and turn around and just check, let's find something that this has a high probability to have a clash. Okay, so let's just apply this. Okay, and if we go up and action show, does not exist. So let's just rerun it again just to make sure. So just hop on here and structural editing, Rotimer, apply. Apply. Okay, perfect. Now there it is. Now that's there. It's actually probably not going to clash. If we actually want to impose this to happen, well, let's actually select everything that it's in the zone of five angstrom. So, okay. So there's a lot of things that are very close. Okay. Let's select this position and let's make it very bulky. So let's say you had a double chip to fat mutation. What would that look like? Structure editing. We want to show it first. Show. We see it's a quite puny valine. It's not big. It doesn't take up all the space. Let's try to make it bigger, larger. Okay. To do this, Rotimer. Oops. Structure editing, Rotimer. Valine, which I'm just tryptophan, don't break apply. And let's screen for something that causes a big amount of clash. Oh, we have something that actually binds here. Let's apply this. Yeah, for sure, we're going to have some clashes. Let's analyze this. So let's analyze this, this position, this position. Select everything. And tools, structural analysis, and clash in contacts. So if we designate those new 36 atoms, get okay, is a huge amount, huge amount of interaction, of clashes, of contacts. So to do that, to what does that tell you? Is tell what if you get mutation in here? Well, there's a high chance if you're losing any affinity for the insulin receptor or any function, maybe there's no hexamerization in the cell. Well, maybe there's a disruption and it's not happening anywhere. It's probably happening between these three amino acids, right? So that can, that can be a head start for further analysis. Okay, so now there's a little bit more in here with structural analysis. There's a nice tool that just simply allows you to calculate the distance, which is quite relevant if you're interested in between two regions or two atoms. So to do so, just show you site chain. Okay, calculate the distance between these two nitrogens. So select your two targets or your two, uh, your two atoms to calculate the distance from. Okay, so I'll select this one, select this one, tools, and simply hop into distance. And to distance, simply create. And what you see here is the total distance. So 6.6 .6 angstrom. Let's actually change this color right here to, oh, that could work. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Okay, perfect. You can change the amount of decimals, ID, or none, if you simply want to create a pseudo bond right here. At the same time, there's an interesting tool called plane centuries and axes. So let's find something a little bit more uh, cyclic to analyze. So nice here, I have an abnormal, actually very abnormal histidine, very, very abnormal. But let's, let's go over that for now. Let's just analyze it with centroids. I guess this PDB had multiple flaws with its PDB construction, or maybe it's just USCF camera, the way it reads it. I don't usually have these kind of problems, but let's, let's bypass it for now. So just social analysis distances and hop back in to axis. So define a plane. Defining a plane basically creates a plane in the middle. Okay. Can be useful either for representation or for calculations a bit later on. Similarly to a plane, what you can define is a centroid. So here in structural analysis, it can either be through distances or through axis, plane, and centroids. You can define the centroid, yes. Mm, no, ah, that's a little bit big. Let's make that two. Put a nice red color and apply. So what occurred is we create that pseudo atom here in the middle. Okay. So here, if we hop on here, okay. Okay. 
Okay, we can see that by just selecting the atoms, shows all the atoms that allowed you to calculate this. Okay, and here you can get more information such as the radius. So that's pretty interesting because it tells you not only the centroid, but the radius. So basically this plane passes through the middle of every atom. Okay, it can be very useful for different calculations, right? For example, really, really quick, quick reason. Uh, let's say you have uh, a drug and it uh, has a heterocyclic like this and it's a little bit too big. So we calculate with a plane and it's slightly too big. One trick you can do is maybe add nitrogens uh, in a way that would maybe squish it a little bit because nitrogen, you know, have smaller radii or maybe you could, um, you know, have different strategies. Maybe add a, a sulfur group here and just maybe, you know, increase the size or decrease the size with different atoms and calculate always with this tool. That's an example. Okay. Perfect. So there's different options here. Not very frequently used, but something very interesting here is going to be into structure comparison. But before going anywhere, I'll try to use two very homologous pro uh, protein structures, but they are slightly different. So for now, we'll try to hide this. So we're going to go into general control, uh, view and con uh, general control, model panel, and just hide it. Okay. Here we have some atoms that we can just hide. And these can be simply hidden into the structure analysis distance and simply remove the check mark next to show. Okay, now we're going to download two structures, the 5 k 5s and the 5k 5t 5k 5t so this is what is called a gpcr gpcrs are a family of receptor protein receptors this is more particularly the calcium sensing receptor so the casr so we'll check if they're structurally homologous they tell you a secret right now I'll run to uh, there there actually are because both of them are the same protein except this one is into inactive and this one is in the inactive or it's the other way around but they're the same the same protein two different conformations okay. so right now what we'll do into structure comparison matchmaker select 5k 5s 5k 5t there's different options here you can select through a selection so let's say you're just interesting in to, um, you're just inst interested in a simple domain, you can do it through there. There's different options through chains. Uh, there's Blossom. So Blossom, if you're not used to, to Blossom, it's a basically a matrix of conservation. Um, and basically uh, your, your, your sensitivity. Okay. Okay, so you can have different position. Okay, so let's apply this. What's going to happen is going to basically align it in three dimensions. So let's see what's going to happen here. Do a little bit of calculations. Oh, let's see what the result it gave us. Okay. Let's zoom in. Okay, play around a little bit. Okay. Of course, it's a diamond, but let's, let's concentrate on this part. You can see that this this nice, nice, nice series of better sheets is highly homologous. Here we're having a little bit of difference. I said there are different conformations, but you can see that there's just a shift. So this is going there, this is going there. You know, you see here this is going this part, this part is going here, this part is coming here. So they're very, 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 very similar. Okay. So now what we can do is actually delete this and make actually video. So video of actually going from this confirmation to this concert confirmation. So we're going to select this chain. So 5k 5s this chain. Oh, the other one. Okay. Action simply delete it. Okay. Tell you sorry at the bottom. Perfect. Now we're stuck with a single model. Let's see if we can calculate and animate this transition. To do so, now they're nicely aligned. 
Just go and structure comparison and morph the confirmation. Select both, add it, and I want 5k, 5t, of course, and add it. Perfect. You can change these settings, but for me, they're a little bit high. Let's do less iteration, okay? And create. So camera is going to calculate every iteration in between both of them. So you see that there's slight difference between glycosylation, but UCSF camera is going to care mostly about the uh, the ribbon. And now if you play it, you can see that, that UCSF camera has created a third structure that's actually moving in between both. Okay, you can slow down the transition or increase it as you wish. If you want to remove both, what you can do is just go here, 5k, 5t, we're just going to hide it for now and do the same thing with 5k, 5s. There's actually still another one. Let's look at it. I think this is 5K, 5S, okay? Oh, we should have taken a ribbon. You're right. Let's just, just hide it and do the same thing with the other one. Right here. Preset, action, ribbon, and hide. Perfect, so now we have our nice morph confirmation. Again, if I can go get my menu, it's right here. Slightly faster. Can be very interesting, as you can see, there's multiple things changing. There's the confirmation of this glycosylation. You can check at different position. You can actually check between distances. And this can be simply very nice say at a lab meeting and you're talking about the mutation of this domain actually can help you really, really visualize the segmentation of different domains and the activation. So here usually you have the other dimer that would be coming in and actually getting very closer, while this seems to be actually getting much farther. So this you have the transmembrane domain right here. So I hope this was helpful. This is end of part four. And next time we'll go over the rest of the remaining tools. So hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.